Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah uh, how to use the power of manifestation to get closer to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad What was that? How to use the power of manifestation to get closer to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad How to use the power of manifestation? Did the video come out yet? This week inshaAllah, yeah that was an important subject. That uh, everyone will have a companion in the grave and that companion is their deeds. So because of the barzakh being so close and there's many other talks on that subject, the reason people marking themselves and we're seeing all of these sort of uh, horrific identities from what we were told of Jahannam and the punishments of Jahannam, people are seeing that in dunya. Because the time of barzakh is very close, means the, the dunya is in its final stages. So then those whom are manifesting, their bad deeds are actually visible to them and their manifestation is now on all social media because we're at the barzakh stage, right? Instagram is not a coincidence, that's from their barzakh reality. All of the, the, the thoughts and, and desires that you been trained to push down, shaitan is allowing it to manifest and that manifestation is, is becoming so powerful it destroys the, the person themselves. When all their bad characteristics manifest, that manifestation becomes so powerful it destroys the insan, the person whom is the creation of Allah. The other one is their creation, their desires that began to manifest, their bad desires that began to manifest. Those bad desires are now much more powerful than them and destroys them and obliterates them. And that's why this is the time in which to manifest the goodness, the, the, the mawli, the celebration, the love, the good deeds, good deeds, good deeds. With the abundance of good deeds then this is the manifestation of a very beautific soul, beautific angelic reality that begins to accompany that servant and begin to pray for that servant at its angelic reality, not at its egoistic and dunya reality. That's the importance that Allah is showing that these beautiful deeds you're doing is now like an angel being that is accompanying you and every prayer it's praying now on your, on your behalf like the time we couldn't talk last night because every word I was saying it was echoing it back to me louder. But that's a, a immense reality that every du'a you make, your du'a is coming back louder from the purified one in front of you, not our dunya person in front of us, not our dunya self because we have our dunya still within us. That one has no ego, that's just the manifestation of all beatific deeds. So these are our very real realities. So when we watch some of these sci-fis they had the ability to make a golem. They would conjure up demons and shaitans from dirt and, and human byproducts and they would make these creatures to appear and go out and to do evil deeds. These are all real. People are doing every moment, they're conjuring every type of badness and making that badness to go out. So insan and people are very powerful and shaitan knows that. And shaitan knows that people don't even know what type of power they have. And he begins to manipulate and abuse them for that power. So with all these good deeds and all these salawats, all the dalal khirat, all, all of the awrads that have been given by the shaykhs, this beatific manifestation is drawing us into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because the hadith of Prophet you'll be with whom you love and the one whom you love, loves you and begins to send these lights and these blessings upon us. That's why in the last days Allah says, when they are oppressors to themselves, jauka, that they have to run to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why awliyaullah and we've given in other talks, they should only be focusing on jauka because this is the time of zulam. So when insan is zalim to himself, all the awliya must be pushing jauka, run to Prophet not talk about where zhuj and majuj are hiding, who cares where they're hiding? 
Every neighbor is Yuzh and Majuj, they eat everything, drink everything, they're all Yuzh and Majuj. You look at the Vancouver, they're all Yuzh and Majuj. <laughs> yeah, well you have to find out where they are, everyone is there. But Jauka is our responsibility is that run. Run to the presence of Prophet So they're like a, like if you would see like a cartoon they'd be screaming for everybody to run to the presence of Prophet because of what's coming. So that they should be rounding them up with salawats, with awrads, with zikrs, with nasheeds, with all of this ishq and muhabbat and that's their only purpose jawukas to round up everybody to run to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why if they're not a part of the solution then they're a big part of the problem. Anyone, anyone calls themselves Sayyidina Mahdi is a kafir, is against Ahlul Sunnah, is a, is a dajjal. So if we need to clarify that for anyone who thinks their face is on the moon and that they think they're Imam Mahdi they're kafir, they're completely outside of Islam. And they took away from the immense power and majesty of Imam Mahdi Salaam. It's not something like that, not something dirty person can claim. This is something beyond our comprehension that's coming upon this earth. So people are emailing and asking about that too. So anyone, anyone you hear said that they say they're Sayyidina Mahdi, Astaghfirullah, big time K on their head and run. Run, don't even have anything to do with that. It's not something like that at all. Most people will not survive the earth for his appearance. Your level of purity and ishq and muhabbat has to be very, very high level. That's not uh, anything common. And that's just a sign of deceit, that's a dajjal, that's what dajjal means to us. Dajjal doesn't mean anti-Christ because we have nothing to do with that. Dajjal means deception and deceit and lies. So that's a big lie, that's a big lie, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Ya Sayyidi, Shaykh Nurjan. Wa alaykum as salam wa Forgive my ignorance, my question, no worries. my question is how are we to survive if we are in the region with huge Wahhabi ideology? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think in other talks we told people to leave those areas. Mm. Punishment coming, fires are coming onto them, Allah's qadab and anger coming onto them. Go back home, go back to your homeland. Even if you can e eat uh, some rice and corn and milk your goat, you are better off than living amongst their high rises, their buildings and their disbelief. Allah's qadab and anger will reach to them and those entire regions will be burning. So that's the difficulty of those areas. And in the west alhamdulillah Allah is, is going to make Islam rise and the reality of Islam to be rising from those regions. So they're all different areas and they serve different purposes. The west is like a clean white slate. We've described many times before, Islam's reality is actually hidden in the West. Social services and uh, the, what is it called? Social services that Prophet brought for the help and support of women and elderly and children, you will find nowhere in the Eastern world except in the West. So it means that the rise of Islam is now in the west and in the eastern it has already been maqrib and the light of Islam has set upon that region. So Islam is rising from the west. You can see it by just the implementation of its services, the taking care of people, elderly, the poor, the 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 most vulnerable people, this is what Prophet brought, not the West. Christian nations had no concept of these realities, they were in dark ages. Islam came and illuminated their understanding. As a result they took this illumination and they began to implement it in their countries. There's not a Muslim country you can see them feeding women, feeding children and, and taking care of the poor housing them and giving them food and, and insurance and giving them uh, something to… somewhere to sleep. 
This is what Prophet brought. And soon inshaAllah they'll close all of the badnesses with this COVID, they closed their nightclubs, they closed all the things that were not pleasing to Allah and drawing closer to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad's requirements. So alhamdulillah it's a big, big change has already occurred. So those areas and eastern areas is dangerous. Try to be at your home and be in a more sort of safer environment. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Why does the shaykh remind us of ourself? Whenever we look at a photo of the shaykh it feels like we have been with the shaykh forever. Ya Alhamdulillah it's a mirror that the shaykh's image is a mirror and that's the talks on, on mirroring and the reality is that you don't see the shaykh's reality but the mirror and the soul of the shaykh reflects back to you and mirrors to the person information about who they are, what their characteristics are. Because anytime you look into the real mirror you see what you need to see not what you want to see. The dunya mirror shows every little kitten like it's a lion. And that's why those cartoons we describe the mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the most fairest of them all. And the dunya mirror lies to you, says, you're the best, you're the fantastic, you're the greatest. But the mirror of Allah when you look into it, it begin to tell you everything wrong. And that's why the muraqabah is the end stages but because of the days of difficulty they're allowing it to be taught now. When you make your tafakkur and make your connection, Everything you're doing wrong is going to be difficult because the shaykh's light is right in front of you saying, don't do that, don't do this, don't do these things, this is not correct. And that's why people then will choose not to do their tafakkur and their contemplation. But it's very powerful, it's a, it's a mirror of, of… it's the mirror of truth, a reflection of truth that comes to them. So alhamdulillah. It gives you your realities, anyone who wants to know about themselves, you're not going to find yourself in a grocery store but the shaykh has the reality of yourself. So when you're calling, emailing, say, give my seven names, well no, no, it's not McDonald's where you drive and pull up and get what you want, it's you have to sit there for 10 years meditating and see how they slowly begin to open within your heart, who are you? What did you promise Allah Are you fulfilling your promise to Allah And then begin to tell you what your first name is at the lowest level all the way up to your seventh name in Divinely Presence. But that's until you know yourself, it's not by somebody giving it to you, it's by you taking the path of getting to know yourself and the struggle and the fight with the self inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please expand on what uh, you meant when you said Queen Sheba is part jinn? Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a there's a nice story that uh, maybe we can send to Yahya to read it that the relationship between the kingdom of Sheba, her name is the Queen is Bilgis and her kingdom is Sheba. Her father had dealt with some jinn and married a queen jinn from the jinn kingdom and they had some testing and difficulty and the queen took one of her children which was a son back to her realm and left one of the children who was a daughter Bilgis with the king. Bilgis inherited the kingdom of Shiva. So she's half jinn from the jinn nations. So that was her power and the authority of her nation and the power that they had. So alhamdulillah and amongst the Muhammadan reality, alhamdulillah Shahbanu was the wife of Imam al Husayn as salam was also from the jinn queen of Iran and the regions of Iran. And that's why all her progeny from Imam al-Husayn as salam 
تو من زین العابدین محمد باقیر من جعفر صادق موسی کاظم علی رضا and all of them are descendants of that bloodline because they're from Imam Zain al Abidin and from the wife of Imam al Husayn Shahrbanu She was at Karbala and when they came to grab her she vanished and a mountain opened and she went into the mountain. That's why that lineage of Imam Hussein is very powerful and all the, the great Imams they're from this lineage. Their knowledge is because of the, 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 the reality of who they are and the, the bloodline of what they represent inshaAllah of uloom and knowledges and, and uh, authorities upon this earth inshaAllah and the hereafter. As Salaamu Sayyidi as the word rub comes from many times in Surah Rahman, which rub is Allah referring to? Then which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Because <laughs> Ziban, yeah, that's the is important. That's why that bad madhab, they said there's only oneness in rububiyya, they're wrong, that's a lie. That rububiyya. And lordship is in darajats and understanding that which governs us in life. That's why to read Surah Al Yusuf, salam, Alif Lam Ra, that's the opening of the secrets of Rububiyyah. And every dialogue of lordship and that which governs insan. So, before anybody can understand heavenly governance, that which governs us. What is governing us now is the bad desires. Someone smokes, their Lord is smoke and cigarettes, nicotine. Anything that governs you from being free to worship Allah is your Lord. So alcohol when they can't stop that's their rub, their rub is that drink. So every bad characteristic, anger if you can't control anger. Your anger, your qadab is your Lord, so that has to be understood. That which governs me is my Lord. The lower lords have to be destroyed, those bad desires they have to be destroyed. So what are they? They're like idols. So when Prophet wanted to free Mecca there were 360 idols. So it means that we have 360 lataif on the body. And each one has an idol on it, trying to govern us towards it and not towards Allah. So this is the great fight inside is that when we fight the bad character, fight the bad desires but with the muraqabah because we can't fight it alone. We don't know what the bad desire, if I just sit by myself and think, oh my what's bad with me, what's bad with me? absolutely nothing, I'm really a great guy, I don't know why the shaykh is making me think like this, <laughs> right? But no, but when you sit and connect your heart and with the light that is in front of you, the light connecting with you, that light begin to burn upon the person. So then many of these minor idols and minor characteristics begin to burn away. Until you can get to the core big characteristics of anger, bad mouth, bad character, the sort of demonic idols that won't go easily and those have to be destroyed. Before those are all destroyed then they begin to be introduced to the heavenly lords. That who is the lord that, that governs me, the lords that are representing me of my shaykh so Atiullah is the highest of lordship. Atiya Rasul is the immensely powerful lordship. Wa ulul amri minkum, I have to know this kingdom of ulul amr. They are the house of lords, not the house of commons. These are of a lordly soul, Rabbaniyoon. Allah is, describes them, they are Rabbaniyoon. They taught the book, they learned the book, and they taught the book. I think it's three, Ali, Amr, Ali Imran 31. I believe so, Mawlana Shaykh said, this is our title from Allah be Rabbaniyoon. Ulama Rabbaniyoon, what is it 331 say? 331 say?
that's the title that we have to achieve. But that can only be by destroying the, the, the bad rubs, the bad con things that are controlling us and then Allah will begin to introduce us to the heavenly lords which are then the awliya and the heavenly kingdom in which when we connect our hearts then we begin to be reflecting these lordly souls. That's why I say if you don't know who your shaykh is and not connecting with them you don't really understand who, who you're with. And that's that's the, the danger, if you don't understand that then you, you take for granted these teachings and, and what these teachings represent. And all the time of creation at the last days who will be the shaykhs of these last days that would usher in a time for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi upon the entire earth. So these are, these are immense realities but people have to connect their heart to find that out, to understand that and to see what honour Allah has given in these last days and how to receive those honours and those lights and those blessings inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, how to balance listening to parents who are also Sufi but expect you to obey them above your shaykh and at times restrict access to the shaykh since shaykh is relative, should we follow Hazrat Uwais Karani way? I don't think you gave your own answer. <laughs> You're probably the parent asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that for you to follow your heart, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah is playing the seven time protection ruqya recording enough or should we recite from print PDF also? If you can recite, alhamdulillah, playing that brings an energy into the home. But to recite it, it changes the energy of your soul. So everything that you recite, imagine our souls, these, these videos that show you these these trays that they change the frequency, they put something on it and all of a sudden it starts to change shapes. Imagine the subtlety of the soul that when we're reciting what's happening with the soul, what's changing with the lights and the frequency and the energy of the soul when we recite is completely different. When you play a recitation that brings an energy and a, and a serenity to an environment. But when you recite it yourself that brings an energy to the self and a light upon the soul which is essential and needed if you can and if you can't then is playing is enough then alhamdulillah. Subhan rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa sharif al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa 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 alayhi wa s